Well, what a difference a week can make. Kim, last week, wheat prices, you said, were kind of walling around, but there's been, uh, you know, some movement up. Yeah, they broke out the top, and, uh, you know, you've got uh, Medford prices up around 705, 7 a dime. I think right now the market thinks that the uh, wheat stocks are tied around the world. Egypt, uh, they got a tender this week uh, for some uh, wheat, $320 a metric ton. That's $8.71 a bushel delivered. It was $242 a metric ton last year, or $657. Uh, of course, part of that uh, too is uh, the tight stocks, but Russia's also got a, a dollar and fifty cent export tax on their wheat. So there's a lot of things going on around the world, but that tight wheat situation is the biggest driver, I think. So you know the market's predicting a tight wheat stock. So what, in your opinion, are the, are the stocks actually tight? In some locations, yes. In some locations, no. But you look at the world ending stocks are projected to be 10.4 billion bushels. 9.9 .9 billion bushel seven year average. Uh, you know, you go back to 2018 19, in world ending stocks were 10.4 billion bushels, and the average annual Oklahoma price was $5.10 a bushel. You look at the U.S., yes, our wheat stocks are tight. Uh, all wheat, 615 million bushel ending stocks, 990 average, so well below there. If you look at hard red winter wheat, 347 million bushels. 480 million bushel average, so U.S. stocks are tight. Now, there's some belief that uh, Black Sea stocks are tight. Uh, you know, 476 million bushel any stocks there, 495 is the average. So real close to the five-year average there. Uh, their production is 4.3 billion bushels. You look at Russia, 367 million bushel ending stocks, 324 average, so they're slightly above average. However, this year's crop, it's only 2.7 billion versus 3.1 billion last year. However, 88% of Russia's wheat crop is number four or better. That means it's milling quality wheat, 87% of it. Last year, only 72% of it was milling quality. Even though they had a 3.1 billion bushel crop versus 2.7 this year, Russia has more milling wheat, 2.33 billion bushels versus 2.27 last year. Well, there were two countries in that you didn't mention that usually play a factor in all this, Argentina and Australia. So what's going on there? Well, if you look at the uh, world's wheat harvest for the 2021-22 uh, marking year, it's about 90% complete. So we got Argentina and Australia, the two major exporters left. Australia, uh, 1.16 billion bushels is their production. Their average is 890, so the third largest crop ever on production. They're ending stocks at 180 million bushels. It's normally 160. Argentina, their production is 735 million bushels, 690 average, above average production there. They're ending stocks at 119 million bushels, 59 is their average, so above average ending stocks in both Australia and Argentina. You know, the past you know six months with the you know especially with the wheat market, it's just been volatile is the word you know that we've been just using over and over. But with these high prices, do you think that that's going to last or just still could be some shakeup? Well, I think it'll last through at least next July August period because there's not another crop after Argentina and Australia, and we're already expecting big crops there. There's no other wheat crop coming on the on the market until our, the U.S. wheat crop starts in late May and early June. So I think these relatively high prices, now they might not stay above seven bucks, but I think they're gonna stay relatively high through our harvest, through the 22 wheat harvest. Fingers crossed as always. Yeah, oh yes, I think it'll work. All right, thanks Kim. Kim Anderson, grain marketing specialist here at Oklahoma State University.